It is 102.7 KISS FM. I will say that yeah. Cara Diaguardi is an excellent sport. And last night, when we saw her rip off Thank her dress, you. it was for charity. It was for charity. I did it for charity. They they had this idea, and they kept saying... Charles Boyd, you, producer. Charles Boyd, you have to do this. It'll be great, but if you're uncomfortable with it, we understand. Of course, I was like, I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> They're like, are you sure? Come on, really? You know, you'll sing. It'll be surprising. And I kept thinking, but people are going to think I've gone crazy because I'm the last person to... to Bear all, you know. It's I've always unless been kind there's of, 28 million people. Well, unless <sighs> there's some money for a charity well, to go to some right. recording studios to build for kids, Is then I'm like, for? how Very much? Cool. Okay, I'll make a fool of we myself. We could have got nudity if we knew this. <laughs> no, get out of here, Ryan. <laughs> uh, so crazy. The look on Katrina's face. I don't know was, what she looked like. It was priceless. It was like uh, I was trying to hug her so that she would understand. I, it was she, all in fun. You know what it was? I'll tell you what it was. And she's aesthetically. Genius, uh huh. But <laughs> what oh it was, was for the first time she felt out of control because she's always in control, right? right? She's got the swagger, she's doing her thing. She you knows she looks great, but yeah. she was out of control. Didn't well, know what was happening. And the whole point of the whole skit and what you saw in Idol was that, you know what? I love women that have great bodies. I think that's amazing. I think that, that women there's take breaking care news of here but on the air. You know what? If you're gonna come to American Idol, you gotta spend time on your voice too. It can't yeah. just be about your body. That can't just be why you're in the music industry. So, you know, I, I was trying to say that politely. Um, well, maybe I wasn't that polite. <laughs> but you know, I've never been known as a polite person. I, you know, I, I just hope she understands it was it was all in good fun, and she did something really good uh, for charity. Cara <laughs> Diaguardi will come back after this. It's Kiss FM. Cara Diaguardi is here. And so No Boundaries is the song that the contest, the winner's single, we call it. Yes. And the guys were giving you a hard time about that. They did were. Th did that know, bother you? The thing is that it's a song about dreams and attaining the impossible. Right. And what these kids go through to get to where they are is extraordinary. It's not only a singing competition, it's now about being an artist, and it's also a mental competition. To stay in this competition week after week, you have to have more than just singing and, and, and talent. You have to have composure and a will and drive and all those things that the song talks about and going through the dark times and coming through it. And when I announced that Chris had won, what did you think? Is that the right winner? I think that they both won. For me, this was a very interesting year because you had such different artists. You had the soft side of rock and the hard side of rock. And it really wasn't about winning. It was about what's your preference. If you had to go to the record store, what are you going to buy? What do you want to listen to? So I would have to you know, see all the voters and, and look at their, their collections in order to tell. But you know, I do think they, they, wanted, they wanted what Chris... Do you, do, do you think that the Danny votes played a part? I definitely do. I think that the Danny vote probably swung the competition. If you were a Danny fan, you probably aligned more with Chris's music. It was a little bit softer, um, you know, the softer side of rock, like I said. But I do not want to discount what Adam did because he turned songs that we knew on their head all season long. And that is about being a creative person. If you could mold Adam's career for the next 10 years, what would you do? You know, it's funny, when I watched him with, with Kiss, I almost thought, this guy could front a ridiculous rock band. I mean, a la Daughtry, where you know it's Daughtry, but it's the band, right. because he's such an incredible front man. And this is his thing, to be able to reach thousands and thousands of people in an arena-like setting. You know, he has the voice for that. He just projects all the way uh, to the back, but he's also learned over the season how to pull it back and come from his heart. And I think that was a challenge for him at first. He was a bit dramatic, and he, he learned how to fix that and use it. Uh, Carrie Diaguardi, before we let you go, the pink elephant in the room. What happens next year? Do you know? I have no idea. Just like I didn't know until probably a few hours if I was going to do that. <laughs> I mean, it was down to the wire. You do it and again? I don't remember one thing about it. All I could think of is, how do I get these You're snaps not even hearing to yourself open? Sing, right? I would oh have God. to live in another country. That I would have loved Ryan, that. I have so much passion. If that malfunctioned, <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> Believe me, I had spot <laughs> double checking, but all I could think of is. And when I get to it, am I going to wet my pants on live TV, <laughs> basically? I was so scared. So will you be ripping your dress off? Never again. Got it. Unless there's a and large amount of money for charity. No, yeah. I'm not doing it again.
Thanks, darling. Thank Great you. season. <laughs> that was fun. We'll be right back.